Hey everybody, The Real Martian here. Hope you guys are having a great week. Happy Friday to everybody. So tonight I got a few things I wanted to cover. Uh, first I wanted to go over the fact that there is another winter storm. My goodness, uh, there have been lots of winter storms this year. I think we're up to our fourth. Normally we only get like one. Uh, but this time I'm very happy to report that I'm not worried. I got zero worry on this one. Everything is actually working. We've got backup power in place. We've got heating system in place. We've got fuel for the heating system in place that doesn't require me to be out there all the time. And this is my segue into we have automation that is now telling us what's happening out there. So we don't have to go out there constantly and worry about it. We actually get to sit right here in this nice warm house and see what's happening out there. So I'm going to talk about that a little bit. So some people have asked, you know, this automation and, you know, geez, was you're a total geek, man. You're, you're writing the software and you're spending all your time making software and that's not very exciting. And why in the world would a homesteader, you know, care about software? Well, remember on the title of our channel, it says future homesteading. Uh, I know Wrangler Star, you know, our mentor, uh, who is just totally awesome. If you're new to our channel and haven't gone to Wrangler Star on YouTube, please go over there. Just amazing stuff that he's doing and, and really great people. So be sure to check out Wrangler Star. But anyway, uh, his theme is modern homesteading. And it's basically, you know, right here and now. Well, what we're looking at and kind of the Martian theme why we're using it is you're going to homesteading is going to evolve. It's going to change as we go forward. And there's a way that we can actually bring kind of the old way of doing things and the new way of doing things. And we can bring them together and take the best of both worlds and that's what we're trying to do here and that's why software and automation and those electronics are important is we don't want to you we don't want to automate everything you can't that's not a good idea lots of risk and reliability issues it ends up adding more complexity and what happens if the power goes out there's an emp or whatever conspiracy theory you want to use you don't want to be solely dependent on electrical devices and i get that but that said if we assume normal operations uh, of our daily life, then automation can actually really help. And if we design it right, we can actually be off grid with that automation and it can really help make your life easier. And if you're just getting into homesteading uh, and maybe electronics is completely foreign to you and you're kind of worried about it, I'm not saying go jump into it, but I will say that if you're new into homesteading, you have a lot of things that you're gonna learn. Take up your time. And time starts to become the one thing that we value most above everything else. Uh, time to spend with your family, time to spend with your wife, uh, time to go to church, time to be with your kids, time to take them to school. Whatever it is, time, 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 time becomes the thing that you really need more of. So automation is a way that we can actually get more time because we could take things that we would normally have to do ourselves, like let's say going and testing the pH or going and testing the oxygen, or going and testing the nitrates and the nitrites, uh, seeing what the temperature is, seeing what the humidity is. All those things require you to, you know, stop what you're doing, go out to wherever those things are at, get your test equipment out, buy the test equipment, make sure the test equipment stays clean, and then test it. So what we're doing here on the Real Martian Homestead is we're actually replacing a lot of those manual tasks, really boring, repetitive uh dirty task and we're putting some automation in place so that you don't have to do them and that that's why it's important to homesteading is because by doing by putting in place automation we actually give you more time to go deal with the cow who's uh having a hard time giving birth or getting your hay in or preparing your garden um spending time with your family getting back to your roots uh riding your horses instead of just being like me which all I do right now is go out there, get hay, clean the stalls, and sit there and watch them get fat and laugh at me. I swear they're laughing at me. Um, instead of riding them and using them, which is why I have them, I end up spending all my time taking care of them uh, instead of enjoying them. So um, automation is a way that we can really help get more time. So I, I hope you can relate to that. Is Sometimes people look at electronics and they look at software and they're like, well, you know, be honest, <laughs> That was me, and when I go to work, that's pretty much all the time when the engineers that I work with are talking to me. So um, I get that. 
But if we can learn together, and I hope my videos, you know, inspire and maybe educate some folks about why automation can be helpful, then it's, it's not such a hard task to overcome. Anyway, so that's automation. Um, I'm going to take a quick break, and I want to actually move off camera, and I want to show you working software. So here we go. So I've gone through a lot to create a simple screen that looks just like this. You would be amazed at the amount of things that you have to learn. But uh, to make it simple, what I've done is I've downloaded an HTML editor. HTML is a language, kind of like Chinese, uh, Japanese, Russian, anything that you want to say as far as hard languages go. I think HTML is one of them. I really just don't understand it. Um, and I went through programming when I was in school. But anyway, it's pretty freaking hard. It's like writing Chinese. So I downloaded a program called Composer. Uh, nice little program. It's free. And it's basically a what you see is what you get type of thing. Uh, where you can just quickly type like you're in Microsoft Word or something. And you can basically make these really simple websites. Uh, which is what this is. This is an actual website. And you can kind of see what we have uh, coming on here is I'm going to be able to view information by lane and then look at the different types of sensors like environmental charts, temperature charts, humidity, uh, pH, oxygen, carbon monoxide, and a whole bunch of other things that we're going to be putting in there. So this is what I wanted to show you. This is cool. Look at that. Uh, this is actual live sensor data, uh, historical as well and you kind of see here I can move across and I got these really cool charts in place um, it's all pulling real data this is the actual lane 2 air temperature so what is this this is 50 degrees Fahrenheit uh, this line right here and you can see that as I move my cursor I can actually see uh, the different temperature through the different time of day and I can zoom in watch this look at that that is so freaking cool so now I can actually see alright here's every minute of the day this is how the temperature uh, changes. I can go to, let's look at a week, uh, three days, and let's check it all out. I can zoom out. Here's all the information. I also have the grow bed temperature, and this line right here, this shows when my sensors were not working because it thinks it's negative 196 degrees Fahrenheit, which would be awesomely cold. Uh, but here we are, we get back up here, zoom in, and we can actually see, oh, no, nope, here's the actual air temperature. Uh, and it's changing as we would expect it to change as the heaters turn on. So that's pretty cool. And then this is humidity. And I can zoom in again on it and I can see all of these things together. So I can, uh, now I can basically be anywhere I want to be and log in and I can see this information. And that really alleviates a lot of stress. You know, oh my goodness, did I uh, leave the water on and running? You know, I could set up a sensor and a graph that shows me if, this, if the water's on or if the level's getting too high. Those are all things that automation can help with. So, uh, again, I remember one YouTube subscriber said, you know, what the heck does any of this have to do with homesteading? Well, what it has to do with is giving you more time so you can go work on some other more important things rather than checking the temperature in your garden or the humidity in your greenhouse or making sure that you have the right pH or oxygen or nitrite and nitrate levels in your soil. Automation makes it to where you can basically write an app and it tells you if anything is wrong. And then you can manage by exception rather than having to go check on it all the darn time. So, um, yeah, I just wanted to show this. This took me days to figure out how to do all this. Uh, a lot of different things, but uh, it's pretty cool once you do get it up and running. And you can pay people, by the way, folks. There's people out there where you can just connect to their site. Uh, some subscribers have actually sent me those links, uh, but I didn't want to pay, and I wanted to learn how to do it myself. So uh, I've now learned, and now it's pretty easy, actually, to put these charts together, and I've got some pretty cool ideas of things I want to do in the future. So yeah, these charts are way cool, and I can go back and I can open up lane 3, and I can see all of it. And the lane 3 heater is off right now, so this uh, variation in temperature is actually caused just by the heating up um, from the sun outside. So even though it's uh, 20 some odd degrees outside, we're actually getting above 40 and staying above freezing. Um, inside. So that's really great news. Very happy about that. Anyway, just wanted to show you that. So yeah, those charts, they're pretty awesome once we get it all put together. And I have the sensors are actually here. Ah, let me get them.
This is like Christmas for geeks. I have more temperature humidity sensors. I have pH sensors sent to me from uh, Vernier. I bought these. Um, they actually gave me these ones to ch try out. Uh, so we're gonna try those out. Um, these ones I had to buy. These are the oxygen sensors. Look at this. Whoa. These are optical dissolved oxygen sensors. And what these are gonna do is detect how much oxygen is in the water for the trout. And we actually have lost some trout and our theory is, is that we've lost them because there's not enough oxygen in the tanks. Even though water is flowing, we think it may not be enough. So there's only one way to check. That's to measure the dissolved oxygen. And this is something that we had on our plan from the very beginning. So I'm excited to get those put in. I also have, uh, sorry, inside of here. Let's get it open here. Again, it's like Christmas. Woohoo! What's in here? Try not to break it. This is a carbon monoxide sensor. So very excited about having that. That's a safety, safety item. And we got our last sensor that we're going to put in. This is a photosynthetic absorbable radiation sensor. And what this detects is the light waves, the frequencies that plants need. So uh, this cap comes off and we got ourselves a little sensor there and it detects light radiation and it tells us if our lights are getting or if our plants are getting enough light. So I'm going to be putting this all together, not in this video, but another another one in the future. Uh, it's pretty cool uh, to have these things and those will all show up on our website. So uh, that's local here so that we can actually monitor these things and then we're actually going to be trying to build an Android app. So you can actually be you could be sitting on the beach in Hawaii drinking your Mai Tais and you could check your system and be like, oh, hey, look at that. Everything's perfectly fine. I can go back to drinking Mai Tais. I do enjoy a good Mai Tai. Anyway, uh, so yeah, that's kind of kind of status update. Microgreens are looking really, really good. Uh, we actually have a harvest uh, that we're doing to get to our customers. So we're excited about that. And uh, I kind of want to start a series of videos here. I'm hoping you'll enjoy them. The series is going to go back in time. And we're actually going to go through the build uh, that we did this last summer. So uh, what I'm going to try to do, I, unfortunately, I didn't take video, but I took pictures. So we're going to do a little picture and voiceover. Uh, but I'm also going to weave in kind of the current state of things as we go. So. Um, I know watching a slideshow on YouTube probably isn't that exciting, but I, I think you guys are really going to like the pictures, uh, and they really do kind of show where we started and where we came from, so a cool before and after. I'll try to make it fun as we go through it, but I'm going to do that series, go back in time, show you what's I been going on. at some of the things uh, from where we were at to where we are not at now. It is uh, quite a change. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, I know sometimes talking about technical stuff can be kind of boring, but I'm really hoping that you can learn that it, technology can help if it's used correctly. Uh, if you put it in the hands of the wrong people, technology can always hurt someone. But if you do it right, uh, you can actually really help out uh, the future homesteader. So anyway, this is The Real Martian. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to give us a thumbs up and help us out by subscribing to the channel. Everybody have a great evening. God bless you all.